guys, my name is Hayley Quinn and this is a sex, dating and relationship advice video for onlinedating.org. Now what I'm going to be chatting to you guys about today is boundaries. And your boundaries are really your, the edges of your comfort zone, the edges of where you feel that your, your moral standards, the behaviour you're happy with, what you want to do, where that lies. Now boundaries are a really important thing to establish within a relationship and how you interact with other people. There's an old fashioned saying that says, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for everything. So really, at the start of a relationship, you need to get really good at being able to gently assert where those boundaries are with you. Because if you don't, and you continue to let someone cross your boundaries, then you're going to feel that you're in a position of weakness within the relationship, and it'll often make you feel really low about yourself. Okay, how do you know when a boundary is being crossed? It's really when you get that instinctive, emotional reaction to something. That's when... Um, you feel like a knee-jerk flinch of maybe annoyance or disappointment when someone has behaved in a certain way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to chat you through some ways that you can deal with this in order to preserve your sense of self and also to preserve your boundaries, but in a way that isn't argumentative or aggressive. If you argue at someone, you generally devote too much emotional time and energy to them, which also doesn't make you feel good about yourself. Also, by using these few tips that I tell you, it's going to give you time for self-reflection so that you can decide whether your boundaries are in the right place or not, which is often really important as well. Okay, so the first thing I would suggest to do is if you get something negative and you have the ability to not respond straight away, that's brilliant. So for instance, if you get a text message or an email or some form of communication that you're not happy with, or you're aware of a circumstance that your partner did, say they went out to a bar with their mates and they didn't tell you about it, um, wait before you get in touch with them. Get in touch with them straight away and you're going to get let all that emotion come out. Instead, give yourself a cooling off period. Also, this not only allows you to rationalise your emotions and decide whether that boundary is in the right place, but it also gives you time to formulate a really good, sensible response to them. And it allows them to feel the vacuum. Now, this brings me on to my second point, which is vacuum, which is if you're ever sure, unsure how to respond to a situation, Often responding with silence and giving the other person breathing space can be a great way forward. If you don't, if you end the interaction, if you're okay to walk away, if you're okay to have a pause um, and not, not continue with the, <coughs> chatting to a person and you don't feel the need to respond to everything they say, then that's a real powerful move. It gives you time to chill out and get your thoughts in order and it gives you time to you, them time to miss you. Okay, my third thing, which is interrelated to all these other points, is really to deal with the situation in a logical and pragmatic manner. The problem is, if you react instinctively, if you don't give the other person space and you launch right into an argument, you probably won't get your points across in the way that you'd like to. You've probably got perfectly valid reasons why you feel your boundaries have been crossed, and yet, if you go ahead and it all comes out in a jumbled, plate-smashing, arguing order, it's not going to really be very useful. Instead, what I would suggest doing is taking time out, writing, putting these points down yourself, and try and get them bullet pointed into the absolute core of what your issues are. You might find yourself arguing over some small domestic issue that's really actually symptomatic of a greater issue um, that should have that is related to some other way that you're feeling about the relationship. So spend time getting to know exactly what your thoughts are, then present them in a logical, pragmatic way. This way you can avoid putting anything that's emotionally inflammatory, you know, calling the other person names, anything like that. Because that really doesn't help solve the problem. It only causes you to inflame the situation more and invest more emotional time and energy in something that already is making you unhappy. So just to recap, your boundaries are really where your comfort zone lies, they're your moral standards and the behaviour that you find acceptable, not only in what you want to do but in how others act towards you. It's important to keep those boundaries in place and preserve your and preserve them because they really set the power dynamic for the relationship. However, I'd say if you ever feel like a boundary is crossed and you get that instinctive emotional reaction, if you have the opportunity, um, don't react straight away. If you can, give the other person and yourself space and time to think and not feel the pressure and the need to instantly respond to someone. That's very powerful too. And also by making your response logical and unemotional, it will allow you to get your points across in a clear way which will help them to be understood without causing any further argument or tension and distress to you or the other person. Anyway, my name's Hayley Quinn and this has been a sex, dating and relationships advice video for onlinedating.org.